Hello my dear students, I am back here with your literature class and I have got a lot of requests to discuss the poem television in the form of question answers. So here is this my video where I will be discussing the questions and the answers of the poem television written by Rod Dehill. Without wasting much time, let me start with the question answers. Question number one. Who are we in the line, the most important thing we have learned? Who are we and what have they learned? Well, the word we here stands for the poet and the people who support the poet's viewpoint. And what have they learned? In the line, the most important thing we have learned. So what have they learned? Well, they have learned... Uh, after their uh, research that children should be kept away from television and the textual words will be that never never let the children sit near the television set. I always tell you try to write the textual words in your answers rather than writing um, the, your own words, try to pick the words from the poem and uh, frame it in your own sentences. Next question. Why does the poet repeat the word never? So the poet repeats the word never in small as well as in capital letters. Uh, this is an example of repetition. In order to emphasize that watching television is really having a negative impact on children and so children should be kept away from television. Next question. What is the better option according to the poet? Because he says now or better still. So what is the better option? The better option is that one should not or the, rather the parent should not install television in their homes. Next question. Why does the poet mention the line in almost every house we have been? What does the word we have been significant about? Well, the word we have mean means that the poet is not just imagining something and writing. No, uh, he, uh, he wants to say that I have the facts with me. He might have conducted some kind of survey or in research work regarding this and he has drawn this conclusion that television has a negative impact on children. Right, next question. What have they watched in almost every house? They stands for the poet and the people who have the same viewpoint. So what have they mostly watched in every house? They have watched in every house that uh, children are busy watching television. But that's not the correct way to write the answer. You should be writing textual words. So what is the textual words? They have seen in every house that Number one, children are gaping at the screen. Number two, they loll and slop and launch about. I have already discussed the meanings of all these words in my prior video. And number three, they keep on staring until their eyes pop out. Right? Next question. What does the expression pop out means? Pop out means... Uh, when the children are continuously looking into something and their eyes um, seem to be totally tired of continuously gazing at one point. Why are these lines put in brackets? In the poem you can see these lines in brackets. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. So why have they been put in bracket? Well, they have been put in bracket solely to emphasize, to reflect that television is really uh, casting a negative impact on children, number one. And number two, they have been put in bracket with the lines at someone's place we saw. That means it is not the poet's imagination. It is reality. 
they might have conducted some kind of a survey or a research work and he is placing the facts in front of you. Right? Next sentence. They sit and stare and stare and sit. Who are they in this line? Well, they refer to the children who are continuously watching television. What does the word sit and stare, stare and sit to mean? Well, uh, these words, this is an example of repetition as well as an alliteration. These words sit and stare and stare and sit means that the children are fully attracted and fascinated towards the television. And they are not doing anything productive. And the poet is not sure whether they first sit and start staring at the television or they just start staring and then sit and continue to sit and watch television. So that is why he has repeated the words in different orders. Stare and sit, sit and stare. Right? Next. What does this line mean? Until they are hypnotized by it. So hypnotized here means that the children are fully attracted and fascinated towards watching television. They find it quite uh, interesting and uh, they are as uh, no physical activity is involved in it. So they are just relaxing by sitting by these postures, uh, lol and slop and launch about. Next question. Why does the poet use the word until they are absolutely drunk? Now you have already, uh, you have used this word drunk. You have heard this word so many times. Drunk is related to drinking of alcohol. When one drinks too much, one loses his senses. He does not understand what he is really doing or what he is really speaking. So here this line means until they are absolutely drunk means that children have lost control on their self. They are completely hypnotized by the television. They have lost their control to think correct or to think what television is doing bad on them. Right? Next question. Oh yes we know. So what does the word oh yes here means? Oh yes here means that the poet suddenly remembers while uh, writing all things about negative about television. He suddenly recalls and says yes. At least there is one positive thing about television. And what is that television? What is that positive thing which he mentions in the next lines? Or the other question will be what are the only benefits of watching television? Well, the only benefits of watching television is that it keeps the child engaged and there is no fear of getting hurt or something. But that's not the textual words. So the textual answer will be the only benefits of watching television according to the poet are number one, it keeps the children still. I hope you have kept your books with you. Just go to the textual words. Number two, children do not climb out to the window sill. Number three, they never fight or kick or punch. And number four and five are the benefits for the parents. Number four, they give a lot of time for the parents to cook the lunch. And number five, to wash the dishes in the sink. So he says this is the only positive aspect of watching television. Right. Next question. What is one asked to stop when he says, but did you ever stop to think? So here the poet is referring to the parents that you should stop thinking about these positive things, these positive benefits which are to you, but think about the negative impact which television is casting on your children. Right? Uh, the benefits mentioned above, are these really the positive aspects of watching television? That uh, the children sit still and the parents have a lot of time to cook and uh, wash their stencils? No. They are, these are not the practical positive impacts of watching television. 
so the poet has tried to use a taunting tone a sarcastic tone he is taunting the parents that don't that stop thinking about your benefits think what this television is doing to your child now the next stanza is all the disadvantages written in capital letters right so what does it stand it rots the sense in the head it kills the imagination that what does it stand for it stands for television do not write the word tv write the word television right and why does the poet use exclamatory sign after these sentences in order to show the surprise that parents listen to this think what the television is doing to your children and at the same time an expression of shock let's see how your children how your kids are deteriorating it clogs and clutters up the mind explain this line it stands for television clogs and clutters means what is clutter clutter is something which is very untidy which is really not wanted so he says television is blocking your mind your child's mind and it is cluttering up cluttering up it is uh, assimilating all the untidy things in the in your child's mind so mention a few figures of speech from these uh, lines figure of speech uses number 1 usage of capital letters just to lay emphasis number 2 uh, the poet has used personification in the line it kills imagination dead number 1 personification is the television where television has been shown as a person killing and number 2 imagination word has also been personified as imagination is killing itself then there is an example of simile in the line his brain becomes as soft as cheese and cheese can be molded in any shape so children who watch lots of television they can be molded in any way whatever the television is teaching them why does the poet use the capital letters and exclamatory signs number 1 in order to lay emphasis on the negative impact the television has and number 2 perhaps he has put everything in capital letters because this is the central idea of the poem the main subject matter of the poem the main message of the poem right next next stanza all right all right you will cry you will say but if we take the set away what shall we do to entertain our darling children who is asking this question now this question is asked by category number 2 i have discussed two categories with you in my prior videos category number 1 parents and category number 2 parents so this is category number 2 parents that is the parents of those children who watch lot of television they are asking this question to the poet and the parents of category number 1 that is who support the poet and what does the poet answer to this question the poet answers this question when the poor parents will ask what shall we do to entertain our darling children please explain so how does the poet answer this question the poet answers this question by asking a counter question to those parents he is asking another question in the answer and what is the question what do you use the darling ones to do he says don't you remember what you used to do right is this technique effective yes this technique is very effective which technique the technique of counter question when a question is asked instead of answering the um, the question directly the poet is posing a counter question try to remember what you used to do when you were children they used to read and read and read and read who are they in this well they stands for the children who used to read lot of books when there were no television or in other words they refers to category number 2 parents when they used to be children how much time according to the poet did the children spend on reading books 
The answer is given in this line. When they were children, how much time they used to read books? One half their lives was reading books. So they used to read so many books. What does great Scott and Gad's look mean? Both are an expression with exclamatory signs. Great, uh, great Scott is an expression of surprise. He says, are you not surprised when you are trying to recall what you used to do? And Gad's look is an expression which is, means to take an oath. Kasam khana, kasam khao aapko yaad aya. So Gad's hook has been taken from the word, the hooks of Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was crucified and nailed. From here, from there the word has been taken, Gad's, Gad's hook. That means the nails, that means kasam khao tumhe yaad aya ya nahi. Then, then the poet reminds him of the books. What type of books were read? And why, what do they represent? So the poet is asking, what type of books were read during those days by you people? So the answer is, the book, there were lots of books to be read. There were wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens and whales, treasure isles, distant shores, smugglers, pirates, sailing ships and elephants and cannibals. These were the different types of books and stories which were read. What do they all represent? They all represent, uh, um, what do you call it, surprising stories. Uh, what is the word, uh, technical word used? They used to, uh, they, uh, they represent the adventurous stories and the stories dealing with suspense. Right? Who are the pirates? And what color pants do they wear? The pirates are the smugglers of the sea. They are the sea robbers. What color pants do they wear? They used to wear purple pants. Who are cannibals? Cannibals are the creatures who eat the human flesh. That is uh, eating their own kind of flesh. What literary device is used over here? Well, here it, there is alliteration, pirates, purple pants, sound of P is repeated, then cannibals crouching, sign, um, sound of C is repeated. Right? Next, who are the younger ones in the line? The younger ones had Beatrix Potter. The younger ones refers to the those parents when they were still younger, still smaller than that age group which we have just discussed reading adventure stories. Who is Beatrix Potter? Well, Beatrix, Beatrix Potter is a very famous English authoress and she, has, she is known for writing stories in, uh, while taking animals as human characters and her books illustrated big colorful pictures. Right? Who is Mr. Todd? Well, Mr. Todd is the fox in one of the stories of Beatrix Potter. And why he is called a dirty rotter? Mr. Todd is called a dirty rotter in that story because he has been depicted as an evil person. A negative character. Who is Squirrel Nutkin? Well, Squirrel Nutkin is a red squirrel in one of the stories. The story is The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin by Beatrix Potter. Who are Piglick Bland? Piglick Bland is again a story of a pig. And who is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle? Mrs. Tiggy Winkle is the story of a hedgehog washerwoman. What is a hedgehog? A hedgehog is a small brown animal like a porcupine. So Beatrix Potter is known for writing stories, taking animals as human characters. Then what do you know about the how the camel got his uh, sorry how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump? So you know what is the hump? Hump is the raised skin part of the camel. So in the initial days during when the uh, camel started from Arabia, there were no humps of the camel. But later on the humps were in the camel. 
So these are the stories written by Rudyard Kipling. And the monkey who lost his rump. Rump is the rear fleshy part of the body under the tail. So these two books were written by Rudyard Kipling which have not been mentioned in the poem. Then who are toad, rat and mole? These are again animal characters who live mostly under the earth. And these books were written by Kenneth Graham. Right? In the book Wind in the Willows. Next question. Question number 29. What does the poet ask the parents to do? Well, the poet asks the parents to do is, number one in the textual words, go throw your television set away, number one. Number two, install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. And number three, to fill the shelves with lots of books. Write the textual words in your answer. Next question. What will be the troubles face or the problems faced by the parents once they throw the television set out? Or in other words, <clears throat> what would be the reaction of the children once the TV set is thrown out? Number one, they will be giving dirty looks. Number two, they will scream and yell. Number three, they will bite and kick. And number four, they might even hit you with sticks. You here stand for the parents. Next question. What, is the, what does the poet advise the parents at this point when the children will be giving dirty looks and kicking them? The poet advises that the parents should completely ignore and neglect these objections or these reactions of the children for a few days. He is asking the parents, advising the parents to tolerate all this just for a few days. Why so? Because he uses the word fear not because we promise you. What does this line mean? The poet is 100% sure that if the uh, parents show a little bit of patience, uh, patience the children will definitely move towards the positive side. He is sure of his success. What does the poet hope to achieve in a few days? And how many days? It will take in about a week or two. So the children will change in a week or two. And how will they change? They will start reading books. Why will they start reading books? Because... They will have nothing else to do. This is a textual word in the answer. Right? Next, what does expression oh boy, oh boy means? It means an expression of surprise. That parents, you will be surprised to see how your children are going to react once they start reading books. Slowly and slowly they will find it the best recreation for themselves. Right? Why will they wonder? They, the poet has used a word. They will wonder what they have ever seen. They will wonder because number one, the slowly growing joy. Number two, that will fill their hearts. How? By starting reading books. And they will feel sorry that why they had been wasting time in reading, uh, sorry, in watching television. What words are used for television? Well, the different words used for television in throughout the poem are number one, ridiculous machine, number two, monster, number three, idiotic thing, uh, rather idiotic thing is number one that is used in the beginning, number two, monster, number three, ridiculous machine, number four, nauseating, number five, foul, number six, unclean, number seven, repulsive television screen. All the negative words used for television. Right? Now what is the significance of the conclusion? The conclusion of the poem. And later each and every kid will love you more for what you did. What you did? You threw the television out, set out. Number two, you brought the bookshelf in. 
and filled it with lots of books. So what is the significance? The children will feel thankful and grateful to you for introducing you to the world of books, for introducing them to the world of books. All you need is a lot of patience. And the last question, the one main, uh, another literary device not uh, discussed throughout, rhetorical speech, the uh, rhetorical questions. The poet has used the technique of rhetorical questions, R-H-E, the H is silent. Rhetorical question means those questions, the poet has used lot of rhetorical questions in the poem for which he has not asked any answer from you because the answers are very much obvious to you. The rhetorical questions are used just to emphasize, just to produce that extra effect in the poem. So what were the, there are very, lots of rhetorical questions of you too is, but did you ever stop to think, what does this do to your beloved thought? What shall we do to entertain? Have you forgotten? Don't you know? So these are the few examples of rhetorical questions. Uh, well, I have tried to sum up the poem within this limit of around, uh, I think I have discussed more than 40 questions with you. I hope it will definitely help you. But before going to this video, I would still suggest you first go through my prior two videos on television part one and part two where I have discussed the poem in detail. Do write about uh, your, your uh, comments uh, whether you like the video or not. Bye-bye.